All righty, what's going on, everybody? And welcome back to season three, episode 47 of Hit the Books, a podcast all about sports betting, the best bets you should be taking, and everything surrounding sports. This week, we got a great week ahead. EA Sports College Football 25 releases here this week to the public on Friday. Lots to look forward to for that. A uh, little bit of news across the NFL with some fantasy football positional rankings here with edge rushers on the docket for this week. With that, more NBA as the Olympics get closer and closer and the Summer League has begun. MLB, we have some recaps of the Home Run Derby and the All-Star Game, but that's all from me here. Let's jump in and introduce my co-host this week, Huff and Ma- uh, sorry, Huff and Mackie. What do you guys got for us here this week? Mackie, why don't you get us going? Yeah, um, dog days, definitely. Uh, we're getting into that part of the summer where there's not much going on, but uh, you know we got free agency and stuff like that, and uh, MLB is kind of... Uh, Getting in, getting into uh, you're really getting into that uh wild card push now after post um all star game and everything, but uh not much else going on. Huff, what do you got going on? Yeah, like like you said, definitely getting into the tough part of summer where it's kind of I mean this week especially with no baseball till I mean today's Wednesday. This releases tomorrow Thursday. I think the games start back up Friday if I'm correct on that. Is yeah, that- I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, the the next two days will be tough. At least we get baseball back, and then you said that uh, we get college football back in just over a month. So uh, mark the calendars. Football is close, um, but definitely have a few weeks leading up to it. And I've actually been betting WNBA. That's how, that's how bored I am right now. <laughs> Can you that- watch it? Um, I today I didn't watch the game today, but I bet on the fever tonight, and you can watch that on ESPN, so I'll be watching it. Huh. Well. You need a pick here for the NBA this evening. Mackie's got the, uh, the fever. The W. The W. <laughs> um, all right, let's keep it going here. First point here on our outline. Notable dates here coming up in the world of sports. Like I said, EA Sports College Football 25 is releasing officially the public on Friday, July 19th at midnight. What are your top three teams you're looking to play as or start your franchise with? Uh, or, you know, be that that player, that dynamic dynasty, or what's your top pick? And neither of you uh, picked up V. Uh, that's on my I list. That's on your list. But that's that's a, I want to play like Gary Green really bad, but uh, I want uh, Texas is also another team that I really want to play with, uh, with the star power offense they kind of got going on. I'm thinking more in the aspect of like the first thing I always do is that road to glory. At least that's what I did on the on the old ones, and that's what I'm excited for. I've been watching a, a couple videos on that lately. Um, I'd probably say West Virginia, Virginia Tech. Um, that's always one I wanted to go to. The Inner Sandman. The 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 uh, at least or supposedly from what I've seen and what I've heard about the game so far, they're really good at like all the the intros and stuff like that. So I'm thinking more like the big time schools. Um, the people that get this game to play is Kennesaw State and like Eastern Michigan. It just blows my mind. Like there's people that are so excited. They're like, oh, I can't wait to rebuild IUPUI. It's like, no, I'm good on that. Give me the West Virginia. Give me Virginia Tech and in my SEC school. Um, I'd probably do South Carolina, one of the non non or really two good SEC programs. Um, especially with Texas and Oklahoma coming over. I'd probably go with South Carolina uh, and try to take over that SEC. But I'm more thinking about what schools I'd commit to in my in my road to glory and those three would definitely be up there. Wisconsin maybe four. What about Big you, Wisconsin Mackie? guy? I like the Badgers. Huff is a Badger boy. Mac, <laughs> did, did you say yours? Yeah, I'd, I'd go. Um, what did I just say? I said Texas, obviously West Virginia, but I guess I'm not allowed to say that. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say the powerhouses. Penn State looks like a looks like the whole atmosphere is all there and everything. So that looks pretty cool as well. Um, South Carolina, Huff, really? What what brings you to South Carolina? Gamecocks, huh? More just picking an SEC team that's not that good. That Ole Miss, give me Ole Miss. They're gonna be like they're, they're gonna be a playoff team this year. Yeah, but there's twelve playoff teams. Yeah, I don't know. They're good. Quinshaw Jud- Judkins or whatever his name is, their running back, supposedly one of the top rated running backs in the game. Him and uh, the kid on Oklahoma State. I'm blanking on his name. The kid that just got a DUI. Yeah, what the hell is his name? He's supposed to be the best running back in the country. Ozzy something. Something with an O. Ozzy Gordon, maybe? Something like that. That sounds right. I just know the Judkins guy. Ozzy Osbourne. Yep. Video, just kidding, you probably. ever see the video of Lane Kiffin driving the guy around mm-hmm. in 
Rolls Royce, the recruit. You ever see that? Yeah, video? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like that's who that is, that running back, but I'm not sure. That's why I always remember. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a good, uh, good long weekend here with uh, this game coming out. Hopefully, lots of people on. I saw something of upwards of like seven hundred thousand concurrent people were on um, for the. Yeah, it's this is a question, Jesse. This is a question for you. Mm -hmm. They know the hype of this game. They know how many people were going to download it and play it early. They know how many copies they sold early. Yeah. What can that server hold? Like so, Friday, come Friday, when everyone gets that game and it's truly open to the public, what can be online at once? Two million, five million. At what point does that game just crash? So <laughs> that's the other thing is like, there's a couple different. This, I don't want to get too in depth, but there's a couple different layers of things to look at. Like when you get on, you install the game. That's one server. When you get on and you play a game against someone else online, that's another server. When you access teams and things like that, you're going back to that first server. So, like, you're, you bounce around a lot. So, it, they all fall into each other, right? So, if the first one doesn't work, you can't, can't get into the game at all. Yeah. The second one works. Oh, damn, you can't play online. Now, how many people are going to come on? And the first thing they're going to do is try to play an online game. Yeah, not me. Yeah. I won't play an online game for probably two weeks. Boom. So, I think, I don't think they're going to have any... Unless one of my friends play. texts me to play online. Like, I will not go out of my way to just play a random person online for probably two weeks. Yeah, I'm not... I don't know if they're too worried about the online side of things. Because, like... I think they're more worried about the franchise. Like, the stuff that people want to do. Like, yeah, the I game think, modes. The, the, here's, what, here's the issue yeah. you guys might run into. You're going to try to download something, and it's going to be super slow because everybody else is trying to do the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to see this time around. So, like, don't get me wrong. Two million people want to play an online game. Is the game abnormally large? Is it like a normal sports game size? Did uh, you look at that? I haven't heard anything about it being abnormally large. I usually do. Like, you know, you hear every time a new Call of Duty update comes out, you hear, oh, another 100 gig. It's like you yeah. aren't hearing that this thing is huge off the crack, which is good. Because yeah, I, th I don't think I have a ton of space. That and I don't think any of these sport ga sports games are that heavy in the sense they're pretty well optimized especially yeah you know, yeah he knows has an idea of what they're doing when they build a game i mean i have like four play. 2k games on my terror or on my hard drive that i need to delete <laughs> um i truly think they could probably handle like two and a half million on their servers playing online at the same time is that just us uh that would be yeah just us damn okay wow it's crazy if they if again and we'll hear what part of the server fails if it does fail i have a feeling it's going to be the online part no before that because that's what everyone's doing yeah like when everyone goes on on at midnight and hits download that, that server can't handle that no like that's way more because that's yeah. what i'm gonna do i'm literally gonna fucking and let it run all up till midnight and download it and then go to bed yeah so as long as people understand it's gonna be it may be a little slower than normal and things like that but again i mean they're already seven hundred and fifty thousand people in yeah. That if I've saw it one concurrent. I mean, and you could. I was gonna say that's concurrent. So say over a million people already have the game. E easily, right? I don't even know. They said they already made forty million just on pre-orders. Wow! Holy shit! Just off people that got the game early. It's the most million. anticipated game since like GTA Five, to be honest. I would. I would say it's gonna be the most anticipated game if unless GTA Six ever comes out. <laughs> yeah. Holy. Big moly. question mark too. The day there's a release date on GTA 6, that will be the most anticipated video game of all time. Yeah. So, is, uh, here, right here, I found the picture. Yeah, this is, no, this is definitely the most anticipated sports game of all time because this is the only sports game that you don't just get every year. Now we're going to. Like, next year, no one's going to give a shit about this release date. Right. Yeah, you're correct. It's just going to be back to, like, oh, Madden comes out next week. Cool. Um, here. New rosters, new colors, like, new jerseys. Right. So, Same here. game. I found that. Picture. Yeah, exactly. 714,000 people online at the same time. Only 235 of those were searching for a game at this point. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, everyone's wow. doing the, the game mode that I, the Road to Glory or the. And, and online. I, I don't need, know what the franchise I just game. call it franchise mode, but you know what I'm talking There's, about. There's, I feel like, Huff, we talked about it. Like you be, you like the one where you be a coach. Like, I've been watching Big Cat do that one where he like he's like a coach. He's the OF. That'd be so cool. For the OCH. OF. Only fans. Um. But yeah, I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to be a good game. I mean, I heard I haven't heard anybody say, "Oh, it's it's Madden." No, it's totally. It looks totally different. Right. So that's I heard it's completely different. Plus, it's great. 
I just felt like that was the big concern, right? That's what we were saying is that it's going to be the same as that game. So I'm right. happy it's not. Right. Yeah. So, thank, thank you, EA Sports. Hopefully we have another solid weekend here. And more I will say, I will say, I might regret saying that I hope it's a totally different game. Whenever I go from playing NCA for a week and then I my, one of my buddies texts me to play Mad, or Madden and then I get on Madden, and it's like a whole fucking different game, but it's still football. Like Tony asked you to play Madden and you just yeah. get stomped. <laughs> Okay. I don't even know when the new Madden comes out. That's one. Th- that's a game that I'm interested to see their sale numbers on this year with this fo- with the college football game coming out like three weeks before it. Yeah, I've been seeing a bunch of memes lately. Actually, it was the one videos of uh, oh, I can't remember. I think it was like the, P- the Peter Griffin meme where he's buying the movie and he's like, "Do not let that fucking touch this movie." And it's them trying because they're trying to bundle Madden with the new game for like hundred <laughs> yeah. bucks. And people, it's are like hundred. Like, it's one hundred fifty bucks. And I'm like, that's great, but like, you're not really saving any money. You don't save any money. Actually, no, I think it's 130 because it'd be 140 if you bought them separate. It must be both deluxe editions. That's what it is. It's 150 and you get both deluxes. Yeah, I guess that makes more sense. But still, just so. So you save 50 bucks. Whatever. I mean, if you're someone that gets the deluxe ones, that is worth it. But you're right. I don't get the deluxe ones of any of them. The deluxe is only worth it if you play Ultimate Team because that's really the only thing they the like. Credits and all the give you the advantage for. Yeah. Well, like I said, game's coming out. Very looking much very much looking forward to it. So hopefully we uh we can all get it. We can get some some reps in and go from there. Let's move over here to the NHL here real quick. Just one point. Happy nineteenth birthday today to Connor Bedard. <laughs> and I saw this and like, you know, they do the same thing with like when Sid or Lundquist or whoever is their birthday and it lifts all their accolades, right? Two time or one time I IHF or whatever, uh da this many points, all that jazz, right? And then right at the top, it's just 19. I'm like, yeah, I kind of forgot he was only 19. Getting old. Dude, he won the Calder while he was truly 18. That's crazy. That's mad. But I feel I, like I, I mean, I feel like that's been done before. But that is crazy. He's, 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 he's generational talent, I'll tell you that. Heck yeah. It's fun to watch. Uh, and then it, actually, this made me think of this. Another uh, photo I saw a graphic was... <laughs> Which one of these bottom feeder teams will excel first? <laughs> it was like the Sharks, the Blackhawks, the Blue Jackets, and someone else. And I was like, that's so mean. Definitely <laughs> the Blackhawks, though. I agree, but like, that's so mean. Which one of these bottom feeder teams will excel yeah, first? Probably, yeah. Some, some pages are savage. They don't it was like the Athletics. And I was like, Jesus. Yeah, but the Sharks have been bad since we beat them in the cup. Yeah. Alrighty, um, keep it moving here. We're going to jump forward to the NHL, or sorry, the NFL, not the NHL. Oop. We just did the NHL. Positional rankings here, fantasy football positional rankings. We're going to do edge rushers here this week. Do either of you have uh, some, someone to get started with? Yeah, I have my list here, Mac. I don't know if you have yours already. You go first. Um, East did not send a list this week for this. Uh, number five, I have Max Crosby of the Vegas Raiders. Number three, I'm going to go Nick Bosa of the San Francisco 49ers. Number two, or did I say number three there? Yeah, you did. <laughs> okay, number five, Max Crosby. Number four, Nick Bosa. Number three, TJ Watt. Number two, Micah Parsons. And number one, I do think Miles Garrett is up there. Um, I, I, I'm that's more of a unanimous, like not unanimous, but I feel like if you ask most people, they'd put him up there. I think those top three are so neck and neck. Um, personally, I, I don't want to put Miles Garrett up there, but, um. I, I will. He is that good. Um, if TJ Watt didn't have the injury issues, he'd easily be my number one. But I think Mike is coming for that spot this year. There's also a lot of young guys that I like. Thibodeau, um, Brian Burns, two guys both on the Giants. I think that Giants defensive line is going to be scary this year. Um, there's a couple other young guys out there throughout the league. Jared Verse, a rookie out of Florida State. I think he's going to be really good. Um yeah, but, I mean, that's a solid list. I don't love to put Garrett at one. I easily could have T.J. Watt up there at one, but um, I'll go with that as my top five. I think top three are, are um, always going to be everyone's top three, but they are very interchangeable. You number, can put five, in number five, I'm going to go Aiden Hutchinson, and I think the age helps him a lot, but um, I think he's up there, and I think he just edges out Max Crosby. Max Crosby's been up there for a minute, but uh, they're right there, so I'm going to go Aiden Hutchinson. Number four, I'm going to go Nick Bosa. Number three, I'm going to go TJ Watt. Um, number two, I am going to go Miles Garrett. And number one, I'm going to go Michael Parsons. Yeah, call me biased, but Michael Parsons draws the most double teams of any edge rusher in the league. So I'm going to give that edge to him. That's because he's so young. 
he's so young and yeah yeah that probably is it the uh, the quickness that he has yeah but um i mean those top three i mean you can you can give it to any one of them you could go in any three or any order with those three yeah you can make a case for every single one but i'm gonna I just I'm gonna... i think you could go in any order with those three but i i don't know if parsons could be three. <laughs> i didn't like, want to say it but i, I agree think... I think he would have to be one or two. I don't know. I kind of am regretting my list right now. I kind of want to switch Parsons one, Watt two, Garrett three, but like Garrett's not third. So it's like, I mean, the t- those three, I mean, it's no, sh- it's no shot at anyone being third. Cause the two guys ahead of you are just absolutely incredible, but yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Putting Garrett at three is so tough. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. That's what I mean. Watt, Watt you can speak into being three just cause the injury. Yeah. Definitely, but then then again, you look at the injury issues and you look at the impact and and their their record whenever he plays. Exactly, and it's like, how yeah. can you how can he be third? But um, yeah, I mean, obviously those three are consensus. Yeah, I think so. Awesome stuff, boys. Um, you Huff, you said Ace did not submit a list for this. No. Cool. All right. Well, Ed Rushers, good. Uh, solid list across the board. Ace but, would have uh, Matt Judon at number one. Yes, he would. He absolutely. I forgot he's a Patriot. How do you forget that? You won't forget it come this season. I still think of him on the Ravens. He's like one of two or two relevant players in the Patriots. Yeah. I looked at where's number nine. Alrighty. Well, let's keep it moving here. We're going pretty quick here, but now into the NBA. Team USA, the Olympic team, the Olympic basketball team. Huff, do you have any news on this? Uh, some recaps of their scrimmage games or anything like that? Mac, you said you watched this one today, didn't you? What was this? Sorry. The Team uh, USA basketball? Uh, yeah, I wa- I've been watching them, actually. I watched the USA-Canada, um, and then I watched them play uh, Serbia today, which was Jokic. Um, oh, yeah. Canada was a good game. I think that it was a lot of ISO ball against Canada. It was I think it was their first scrimmage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Canada. Um, was, they won against Serbia here, 105 to 79. Yeah, they they smoked Serbia today. But that Canada game, it looked like they weren't very. It was a lot of ISO ball. They they weren't they weren't really gelling together. And then you watch that game today, and they're they're finding each other uh, with no look passes and everything, and they're really gelling together. And um, it looks like they're actually becoming a team, and it looks like they've been practicing together for a few weeks, which they which they finally have. Um, nobody's touching this team, in my opinion. I think um, when Steph Curry's shooting seven for ten from three, uh, LeBron's throwing alley oop dunks dunks up there in the fourth quarter when he's forty years old. It's like how Kevin Durant's not even on the floor yet, and they're they're beating they're beating Jokic by by thirty five points. Um, they shouldn't they shouldn't have a competitor the entire way, but obviously everyone has bad games, and you're gonna see some fluke shit. But um, they're, I don't think they lose a game. I think, if anything, they get a close game to Canada or Australia or something like that. The so, I'm trying to find, like, a box score. For the sake. Here, I got him. Steph so, had 24, I know. He was 6 for 9. I was three, That's really what I care about. After and, he said he's the number I'm not going to lie. I know I hate on Ann a little, but he hasn't he, – he just – he's just out there getting his shots up, and he doesn't really look like he's, like – doing much to be honest really i haven't watched this i just i hate i I wanted to see what he did after saying uh, they have to fit around me the whole first option thing is just (laughs) ant being and there's he's not the first option i love that when he said it though yeah anthony edwards 16 points what was it when was that today he had 16 today i believe that's what this says right serbia yeah in serbia very low-key 16 today then what did he what was his shooting what did it say like Eight uh, they five. don't take a lot of shots. No, none of them take a lot five of shots. Field goals, so, yeah, so field I mean, like, so what was he? Eight for ten. Five for ten on field goals. Two three pointers. Five three pointer attempts. Uh, four for four on three for three free throws. Um, when you watch them, I swear, it's just out there practicing his mid range shots. Assists. He's not out there to like play basketball. <laughs> All this stuff is on their ba- the USA basketball website. By the way, I wasn't able to find it on like ESPN or anything like that. AD has also know. looked incredible. Joel Embiid has looked terrible. I haven't seen him play a good minute of, uh, of basketball yet. Um, trying to flop in in a in, in international play isn't really working for him. But uh, AD has looked incredible. AD, yep. LeBron, Drew Holiday's looked pretty good as well. And then obviously Steph has looked pretty well. We talked a little earlier. You guys were like, "Where are these games?" Uh, the Canada one was in Vegas. 
I don't know exactly. I knew where, the Canada one was in Vegas, and then the other ones are in Abu Dhabi. Like my. Where do they go next? I don't. Uh, they play South live, Sudan and Germany. I know. I London heard them say it on, the TV. on the twentieth against South Sudan. Where is that? Uh, London. Okay, so they go to London and then they go to Paris. And then Germany on the 22nd, also in London. Yes. Okay. Woo. Yeah, I'm, exci- I'm excited. I'm excited, watch. yeah. Stuff's What's cool. the time? What time do you think these get? Like, what uh, time are these games going to be out when they're in Paris? Oh, good question. Well, they'll be all day. You know what I mean? They're not just true, prime time. True. Like, lots yeah, of true. Uh, so probably starting like 3 p.m. Yeah. Idea. And then you got the coaching staff of Steve Kerr, Tyron Liu, and what's the guy, Mark Few? Is that the Gonzaga coach? Yeah. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. That's kind of surprising that he's on that staff. but Yeah, the success he's had. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess you're right, but he's up there. It's now that all the it. now that all the big dogs in college basketball. Jeff has gone. gone. He, he's he goes to the games sometimes though. He was in Vegas for the Canada game. Yeah, I saw that. I'd milk that while I could if I was him too. It's like ah, I'm retired. I got nothing else going on. They'll I'll sit fr- uh, fr- courtside in Vegas, and I can sit courtside at the game. Fuck it. <laughs> no, it's pretty cool though watching them all play together. I love watching Steph and LeBron together. I swear to God, if they got a chance to play to play together in the NBA, they would have just ran it for ten years straight. Yeah, like yeah, I'm, they could still make a push right now, dude. Oh, definitely, but they're they'll never play together. No, yeah. they don't have a chance now. I just don't think they want to, to be honest. I think LeBron's going to retire a Laker and Steph's going to retire a Warrior. They they look at it as like a a Magic Bird rivalry era, I guess. Yeah. They don't they don't want to team up. They both had their super teams. Yeah. They both they yeah, exactly. Awesome boys, lots of good stuff there. Uh moving over or moving through the NBA here. The NBA Summer League has officially tipped off. Bulls rookie Mattis Bulzillis, I'm going to say, has looked like he is gone, going to be a star. Bronny James and the Lakers have struggled to start. Have you guys turned in any of the Summer League? And if so, who do you have your eyes on? Very curious. Do they? Have, yeah, they definitely have odds for this stuff, right? But aren't they pretty? Yeah, they do. I bet on one the other night and lost. Um, <laughs> What'd you bet on? I had the Thunder. I forget what it was against. I think they were playing Miami. It was the second game. I took the Thunder spread, and they just lost by, like, 50. <laughs> it was bad. It just feels so... Oh, my God. I mean, you never know what's going to happen in this thing. I looked at the lineups. I was like, all right, Thunder should win this game. And then I guess the Thunder just, like, didn't, didn't play, play half the guys that yeah. I thought was going to play. Like, I don't know. There's so many question marks around it. It's, like, not even... Literally, yeah, play. that's why That's why I literally told myself. I was like, all right, dude, just wait for baseball to come back. Yeah, with all the Bronny struggles, like, I do feel, I, I, I get it, but, like, I feel bad, man. I mean, he doesn't look out of place out there. I will say that. Like, it doesn't look like he's he's out there, like, with his head chopped off. It's just the Here's shots the aren't falling. Is, is they're, like, trying to run through him. Like, he's. Yeah, let him, let him be a system player. Let him be the 55th overall pick, man. That's what you drafted him as. Like, don't let him go out there and try to run the offense. Like, let him go out there, show his stuff, get his shots up when he needs to. But, he, I mean, all eyes on him 24-7. I understand it. It's like really tough for him, but dude, and that uh, it's just the expectations that people have for they literally expect him to be his dad 2.0. Like, yeah, that is not gonna happen. Yeah, the hate is just incredible on him. Like, just let the dude ball for a little, let him get a feel for it. I think he'll figure it out. It's just a tough, gonna... it's just a tough look that they gave him. Like, the so much money they gave him, dude, that's great. <laughs> Did you see the I saw a graphic, it was like the past 10 years, 55th, 55th overall, overall pick contract. All... All two way contracts. They're all two ways, and they're all league minimum. And Bronny yeah. James gets four years, seven point nine million. <laughs> and it, it's basically a two way too. I think he's like supposed to spend most of the time in the G League. That's I heard that as well. That's where he should be playing. Let him develop a little more. Get, I can get it. You don't want to go back to college. Like you want to be a professional basketball player. That's fine. But like, I'd rather stay in college than be them be like you're going to the G League, dude. Like, yeah, but I, I think he can develop better in the G League, to be honest. Yeah, some guys do. Like, here, I saw this to, this today. Who do you think, like, him taking, the like, people are saying, like, he's taking up a roster spot from, like, guys in the, in the G League and stuff like that. They started naming all these guys out of there that are out of the NBA right now. And right now, what's the guy with the long hair? Bates? Amani Bates? Amani Bates. 
Like, do you think, like, if you're, the, if you're the Lakers GM, who would you rather on your team right now? Yeah, I mean, I guess you're going to say Monty Bates, but I, I in he's the like long haul. He's like a 20 point off the bench, like. He's also a problem. He's a, there's a reason he went to Eastern Michigan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, they, that's, like, the argument they were making. They were, like, are the Lakers seriously, like, trying to tell themselves, like, yeah, this is going to work. He's going to be really good. Like, J.J. Redick being, like, oh, uh, you know, we, we drafted him off his potential. Like, yeah, obviously well, there's potential there. We saw what LeBron James turned into. Like, No matter how many times. A tenth of that. No matter how many times they want to say there was no impact on LeBron, everyone knows it was, like, the reason that he was drafted. Every I love LeBron. Time. He has the Lakers organization by their nutsack. He would have any LeBron. organization by their nutsack, and for good reason. He's LeBron James, but, but like, they, don't he sit here and try to tell me he, he, was, he was good enough for that for that draft pick because – there was guys that you should have taken over him. The I've never he's never had a team by their nutsack this much. This is crazy, dude. Like JJ Redick, then they draft his son. Son gets a fully guaranteed contract. Like I love him. I just think it is funny. Like guy does what he wants. Lot. I see how LeBron haters are just laughing their ass off at everything that's going on. He is LeBron James, though. Yeah, I mean, let him do what he wants to do. He said it for years. He's like, I'm going to play with my son. I don't give a fuck. And the Lakers were like, all right, fuck it. It's 55th overall pick. We're probably going to cut this kid anyway. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Just draft him. What are we really missing out on here anyway? <laughs> yeah, literally. All the, the, that was a literally a lose-lose situation for them. They draft him. They waste the draft pick. But LeBron's happy. You don't draft him. LeBron's pissed and probably leaves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But chances are, I mean, whoever they drafted with the 55th overall pick wouldn't turn out to be a stud anyway. So No, but but there wouldn't be the eyes on the Lakers in Summer League right now to be like, what's Bronny James doing? Whatever, let him develop a little. I don't want to jump the like, gun. Dude, I haven't like, heard anything about the kid that went number one overall. I'm hearing more about LeBronny James. You Is he even I mean? playing? Do you see yeah, Alex Starr went fucking 0 for 15 yesterday? Imagine if Bronny James did that. It'd be front page of Sports Center. Well, I'm trying. James scores two points in its front sk- front stage. Of That's what I mean. Like, can you imagine, like, like the the hype that Bronny James has more expectations than these good people have for Risha Shea or whatever his name is, Sar, Rob Dillingham, like these guys. Yeah, like, like, it's crazy. Speaking of Dillingham, did you see how good him and Terrence Shannon look on the Wolves summer league team? Terrence Shannon's a bucket, man. Dude, they look so good. Those are those are two great additions. He is really good. I couldn't believe the Spurs traded Dillingham on draft night. They could have had Stephon Castle, Dillingham, and Wembenyama in their starting lineup. Dillingham's going to be a nice piece for this team of this year. Yeah, that's exactly what they needed when I was saying they need to sign Darius Garland. Now, fuck that. You have a young guy that's going to be really good in two years. Or next year. He might be good this year. Not yeah, he'll, like he'll put up numbers, good, but he's going yeah. to need a little development as well. But he's used to being the guy. Like, he was the guy at, SC, or guy at uh, Kentucky. I mean, I know he had Reed Shepard, but like. You know, he was off the bench, too. Yeah. But, I mean, he was one of those guys who played 30 minutes off the bench. Yeah, he would come in like 10 minutes into the game and not leave for unless it was a blowout for five minutes left. Yeah, some nice phenoms coming up. Excited for the, for the season this year. I got some most summer league talk you'll ever get out of this podcast. <laughs> you know there's really nothing going on. <laughs> Yeah, when we're dipping into summer league, that's tough. Yeah. Alrighty, lots of good stuff, boys. In the NBA, let's move up to the MLB here. The All Star Game and the Home Run Derby were this past uh, weekend slash week. Uh, let's review those here. Uh, whether it's that magnetic Pirates rookie Paul Skeens getting getting massive Yankee slugger Aaron Judge to roll over a hundred mile an hour fastball, Dodgers international sensation Shohei Otani launching a four hundred foot homer. Or the, or the Phillies, Trey Turner, and Royals. Bobby Witt Jr. making difficult defense plays at shortstop. Some of the sport's greatest skill sets were on display Tuesday night at Globe Life Field in Houston, Texas. Did you guys get to get a look at the All-Star, the All-Star game here? If so, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I, def- I watched it. Uh, Skeens looked good in the first inning. That we got the matchup we wanted to see. It wasn't as, uh, as exciting as everyone wanted. A one-pitch line out to third. Um, <laughs> But, I mean, we got to see it. He got him out. He, we had a clean inning. Obviously, he looked good. 
Um, but as far as the National League ends up losing the game, American League is back to uh, their streak or starting their streak again. They are now 10-1 and in the last 11 All-Star games um, after losing last year to the National League. But um, Ace isn't here to defend this. What, what's your opinion on Duran, MVP? Um, I mean, he was a difference maker at the end of the day. I, I, I understand it. They always do something like that. Who else are you going to give it to at that point? I would have wanted Soto. He got on base I, every time. Yeah, how many at bats? Two. Yeah, what do you have? He had a double, a run, and then a walk. I think. Yeah, I don't know if you. I I I understand the Duran, uh, play. It's always so. It's always those guys that hit the game winning home run or game winning yeah. hit late in the game. Or I actually didn't even turn it on to like the fourth or fifth inning, so I didn't see a lot of runs. But you didn't see Otani's homer. No, I did not. Yeah, but Otani locked it locked up the MVP if they won that game. Oh yeah, he was exactly yeah. And L, I mean AL should have won this year. They're clearly a better conference or league, I guess you could say, um, this season. But yeah, they're they're just continuing that reign. Yeah, the the lineup of people batting is truly crazy. How many guys come in? Crazy. I felt like, like I did some of the. I like how some of the innings. The one guy in the Phillies, what's his name, Christopher Sanchez? He threw two pitches and they pulled him. No way. He went two. He went two pitches, two pop outs, and the manager came out and pulled him because That's they were on the crazy. They were on like a two out limit because they had to get so many pitchers in, yeah, so they all got yeah. two outs instead of three. And this guy throws first pitch fastball, pop up out. Second pitch curveball, pop up. The catcher catches it in foul territory. Manager comes out and pulls him. He's like, Are you like laughing. Me? Yeah, he was like, all right, yeah, I get it. That was fun, dude. I'm glad I came here. Yeah, I'm glad I flew all the way here for this. <laughs> could have been in could have, could have been in Cabo for the week, but no, I came here to throw two fucking pitches. Literally, like someone was like, "Oh, they get an eighty thousand dollar bonus if they win the game." I was like, "Dude, these guys make twenty five million a year. Like, they'd rather be in, like you said, Cabo for five days." <laughs> eighty thousand dollars. Woohoo! They probably just donate that rate to whatever charity they sponsor. So that's their that's their donation. Yeah, that's, that's their tax exactly. write off right there. Yeah, exactly. All righty. Well, into the home run what? derby here. The twenty twenty four MLB home run derby was this past Monday in Arlington, Texas, where we saw Tascar. I don't know how to say that. Hernandez. To Oscar. To Oscar. I'll remember that one day. To Oscar Hernandez <laughs> defeated Bobby Witt Jr. in the final round of a score of fourteen to thirteen. Witt Jr. was just inches away from tying Hernandez with 14 to force a potential swing off or win it, but Hernandez held on and secured the first the first home run derby title for a Los Angeles Dodger. It's a pretty interesting one. I, I was kind of surprised by that for how many good Dodgers there are, but I guess a lot of them just don't do the derby. They don't give a fuck about the derby. Yeah, See, my thing about for the World Series. I'm I honestly think the derby sucks. Like I I hate the home run derby. I think it's stupid, and I think it's stupid how they change up the entire format every single year. But um, that last round was definitely very entertaining. I enjoyed. I thought that. this was the best one in a while, personally. You think so? I yeah, just don't new, really enjoy the derby. I like I think the new format fun. where it's like you clear this number, you're in the semifinals. Yeah. No, I get it. I I I just don't like how they change it every year. It's it's different every single year. Don't even know what to expect. They need to get rid of the clock in total, but then it would take way too long. It already takes three hours. Yeah, it was an hour and a half, and and the first round was just over. An hour and a half it took for the first round to get over. I was gonna say I I put a I had a twenty five dollar free bet. My dumbass put it on Henderson, who literally came in last. I had to sit there the entire time waiting for him to hit, and then I'm like, just for him to shit the bed. <laughs> I'm like, it's fucking nine thirty. Can we get rolling with this? Like, and then he loses. I'm like, all right, sweet, I can go to bed anyway. Yeah. I don't really care about this. Yeah, no, I'm just not a big fan of the home run derby. I think it's kind of stupid, but um... I like it. It's just, yeah, I know what you mean. It is annoying. They do change it. I just hate how it's never the guys you want to see. Like, T. Oscar Hernandez is not the. Well, you're, it's you know not you're going out there to watch hit home runs. Like, exactly. You want to like, see Judge. You want to see. You, I guess Gunner. I want to see out there. the dream. The dream scenario. The dream rotation would be Judge, Soto, Otani, probably Bryce Harper. I'd put in there. Yeah. Maybe Vlad Guerrero. You get a big power guy. Who he's done it before. He's a bit of former champion. Um. Acuna healthy. You're not gonna uh, get those guys though. I mean, Judge that's what I mean. It, like Judge did it his rookie year. I don't think he's done it since. Maybe get Stanton back in there, another former champion. Like, imagine if there was three Yankees participating in the home run derby. That would be sick. 
Yeah, even two, Judd they and get, Soto, that would be so cool. They get paid too much to just go out there and swing their ass off and risk like popping a hip or something. <laughs> yeah, dude, those guys, those guys tweak their fucking hip. They're out for the year. Yeah, it's just not what it used to be. I don't think it was a good one though. Yeah, good final round, I'll say. Yeah. Heck yeah. Alrighty. Uh, continuing forward. Now that we're officially through the All-Star break and starting the second half of the MLB season on Friday, let's look at the divisional odds for each division. What teams would like to represent the AL and the NL? Um, where did that go? Here we go. So it looks like Dodgers are the leader of the National League at plus 175. Phillies at plus 225. Braves plus 450. Brewers plus 900. Padres plus 1600 for the, that top five there in the NL. If that's where you guys want to start do you think, Mackie? Who's your, who's your, who's your, if you had to make a prediction right now, who's the World Series? Oh, geez, dude. I, I hate the MLB format. I think it's so easy for teams to get upset. I think, because the first two rounds, it, it takes till the third round until you're playing a seven game series. So, yeah. Um, I'll say. I have the Phillies coming out of the National League. I don't know. If it's you so easy that. to say that, though. So easy I know to that's say that, that that's the one I'm confident. In. I I'm not big on this Dodgers team. I'm not big on. I I just think the Phillies are after getting to the NLCS last year. I think this is their year to get there. I don't think I don't know if they win the World Series. I think they could, obviously getting there. But I I definitely am on Philly over the Dodgers if that were to be a series and at some point. I'm gonna go Brewers Orioles. Brewers. I think they're going to get hot at the right time. I, like the I think they I like have the it. Brewers. I they're, like sitting, the Brewers. they're sitting 13, 14 games over 500 right now. They have it. The bats got to keep going. The pitching has to keep going. I think that they have it in them. And, and all they have to do, all you got to do is get hot. It's the Diamondbacks in the World Series last year. They're That's only 9-1 to, to win the NL. Yeah, because it's only – who's ahead of them? The Braves, the Phillies, and the Dodgers. Dodgers. That's it. Yeah. I, I, I would not be – I hate to say you're not scared of the Braves. But like, with no Acuna, no Strider, I'm not. If I'm one of those teams, You're losing right now, a lot even, of talent. I was gonna say I even like the Brewers over the Braves. Yeah, I think the Brewers uh, get hot at the right time. They're gonna make the playoffs. I think they're pretty much what about a lot. The Ameri- what about the American League? You said Orioles. I said Orioles. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They have the star power as well. They have that heart of the lineup that's really hard to get past. Maybe the Yankees, if they can get hot. They have the best lineup. That's best my roster. Pick. I think it's going to be Phillies-Yankees. Oh, with the heavy hitters, huh? That would be that would be mayhem if it was Philly versus New York City. That'd be crazy. What would be crazier, Philly versus uh, the Phillies-Yankees or Phillies-Orioles? Phillies-Yankees. Phillies-Yankees hate each other. That was 9 too. That'd be a good one. Yeah. When the Phillies were could go back-to-back and the Yankees won in 9 yeah. I'd love to see that. I I'm would too. For, I'm rooting That's for the what Yankees. I'm rooting for. That's what I'm rooting for. Yeah, those are the two teams I want to see get there. I just like Bryce Harper, so I want to see him win one. Uh, I, I do like Bryce Harper. I'm not gonna lie, but I, I kind of hate him at the same time. I mean, he's in your division. That'd be yeah. like he, he's like, always been in my division, even when he was in Washington. I know, yeah. Or Nationals, I meant. Well, you yeah, guys kind of. You guys already came, kind of gave a little insight on who you're thinking for the American League, but Yankees leading the pack there, plus 250. Orioles right behind them, plus 275. Guardians, plus 600. Astros, plus 700. Twins, plus 800. And Mariners, plus 850. Uh, that, 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 that top six. Dude, Cleveland. Mariners. Is there, is there any Cleveland. value in Cleveland? I, was, I almost said them. Um, no, they're going to fall off. They're I the best closer I, I think- in the game. I think once the playoffs come around, that'll that'll falter. The only thing is that they have, they they do have the best closer in the game. I think Emmanuel Class is the best closer in the game. But um, so if they have a lead late in the game, I I I uh, I don't think they're giving it up. But I I just don't think the roster is good enough at the end of the game. Mariners down to it. Mariners. Nah. No. What are they? Five games over five hundred right now. Something like that. Uh, I could see them missing the missing the playoffs. I don't think the Astros are a real threat this year either. I don't think the Astros. Yeah, I'm not worried about the Astros. Any of those? Uh, what is it? AL West. 
Astros, Rangers, Mariners. Angel A's, that's the AL West, I think. Astros, yeah. Yeah. I think anyone in that division sure. I'm not worried about. I'd say I like your Brewers pick. You're kind of making me lean into that. That'd be a good value play. I, I'm going to go with Phillies Yankees. I feel like it's a very common pick, um, but it, it is the, those two teams are so loaded, but if no injuries happen, um, I could definitely see them get there. I feel like ACE would be saying Dodgers Orioles. Is that safe to say? Yeah, he's saying Dodgers Red Sox. <laughs> No, yeah, probably Dodgers or Orioles. He'll probably, he might go, no, he'll probably go Dodgers Astros, to be honest. He's a yeah. big Astros guy. I, I think they get there. At least. I think they get to the playoffs at least. So um, once they get to the playoffs, I mean, they're obviously not the easiest team to kick out, but I don't think they yeah. have this year. No. I think, uh, yeah, I'll go Phillies Yankees. Would you say? I said, um, what Brewers, did I say? I said Brewers Orioles. I'm going to switch it to Brewers Yankees. I think, I think the Yankees get hot at the right time. I like I like the Yankees. Awesome stuff, boys. Uh, real real quickly, I'm gonna run through these World Series odds here. Dodgers leading the pack at plus three thirty three here in MGM. Phillies plus four fifty. Yankees plus five fifty. Orioles plus six hundred. Braves plus nine hundred. Guardians plus sixteen hundred. Astros and Twins also at sixteen hundred. I like it. Alrighty, moving forward here. Let's jump into these power rankings here for this week. Uh, coming in at number five, we have the Cleveland Guardians. Number four, the New York Yankees. Number three, the Baltimore Orioles. Number two, the Los Angeles Dodgers. And number one, the Philadelphia Phillies there to round out our power rankings here for this week here in July. Any thoughts on that? That's a solid list. I'm None of the Yankees back in there after that tough month they had. They went into Baltimore, handled business, and uh, those haven't looked too good of late either. So uh, None of these teams have necessarily looked good in my opinion they're yeah, all like i said they're all they've all been tough or they've all had tough skids in their past 10 games yeah they all have losing records in the last 10 games i think but i mean somebody's got to be at the top right now so uh give it to the phillies right now and those four teams trailing them not really that close but everyone's hating on the yankees right now orioles don't look much better no dodgers don't look much better if those two teams played in a playoff series right now i'll take the yankees 10 times out of 10 yeah me too definitely they have a little rivalry going on there, too, now. I like that, because they're both good in the same division. How and I like how is. Ace is up there in Boston. He's like, the Red Sox are so good. I'm like, you're third in your division, dude. You have two powerhouses in your division. Like, Even though they are having a pretty good season right now, they're just overlooked. It's irrelevant. Because, the best yeah. thing they could be is a wild card. Yeah, they don't really have a shot at that division. It's like, I might sound delusional with this, but like the Brewers went on a little skid, and the Pirates are only three and a half games back of the Brewers at one point. Like, There's a chance, like... No way right now, are they? Huh? What are they right now? Pirates are 500 right now. But the Cardinals are still ahead of us. Mets, are, Mets don't really have a shot at the division Right now either. we're six and a half games back. Yeah, we're 12 we're, and a half. We have the the, that's Phillies what I mean. You're in that same situation as the Red Sox. Like, you have the Phillies to deal with. The best team in our division is the Brewers. I think the Pirates will finish up, uh, ahead of the Cardinals. Cardinals are 50 and 46 right now. Pirates are 48 and 48 with the exact amount of games played. All right, give me your wild card teams right now. Let me see. Hold on. Let me find this. All right, American League. What is it? So, like, you are you looking at the ESPN app? What are you looking at? What app? Do you look, look at the at? score. All right, let me look at it there because then you can explain to me. All right, I'll, I'm so confused. I'll give you mine right now. I'm going to go or Orioles, Mariners, Twins in the American League. I think the Yankees win the division, and I think the Astros win the division. I was just going to say, who'd you say? I was going to say, or I have the Yankees winning that division as well. Orioles, Mariners, Twins. Twins. And then I'm going to go. I, I kind of think the Royals get in there. I think they're sliding too much right now. I don't think they have it in them. Who'd you say? Royals slash? No, I said Orioles. Mariners, Twins. I could agree. I could see that. I could see two. I, I would eat, if I if the Royals don't make it. I would put the Mariners in there. I think but the I Red think Sox. The first, are the, dreams, the first two teams were in agreement on. I think the Red Sox are the first team out. I think the Royals yeah. will be right there. And then I I'm just think go, be, I just think the luck will run off for this Red Sox. Yeah, I agree. And then I'm gonna go. 
Call me biased. I like the go. Astros to get in over the Red Sox. No, I think the Astros win the division. Okay. Do you just think the Rangers? Are, who's in first? In the division? Mariners. I think the Mariners. Oh, are okay, 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 okay. And then I'm gonna go. Braves, Mets, Padres. I'm not big on the Padres. Or the Diamondbacks. I'm going to go Braves, Mets, Pirates. You think the Mets get in? I think I truly think both of our teams can get in. Who? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Dude, you're, I... you're sitting in a wild card spot right now, ahead of the Diamondbacks Pirates, and Padres. Pirates have a... back. Pirates, Pirates yeah. have a gauntlet coming up. A gauntlet. After Philly, it's not that bad. Dude, it's bad, dude. You don't have an easy game for like a month and a half. Oh, my God. Let me read this off. Three against the Phillies. Three against the Divisional Cardinals. We'll beat the Cardinals. We'll win that series. I can probably Okay, win. okay. Say you even win the series. You're not, I don't think you sweep. Yeah. Three at the Diamondbacks, another team in the exact same position as you. Three at the Astros, who are hot. Three against the Diamondbacks, same position as you. Three against the Padres. Against the Padres, same position as you. Three at the Dodgers. Three at the Padres. Mariners, and then you get the Rangers, who are your first easiest team. That is a gauntlet coming out of the All Star break. Look at that! Look at the end of our season. Uh, I think if I think I I think Marlins, Royals, Cardinals, Reds, Brewers. The only thing is, we end with in New York with the Yankees. Dude, I think the schedule is too hard. I really do. I think if you can maybe get out of after that, after that, after that trip out west when you play the Dodgers three times and the Padres three times, I think if you can get out of that, a game or two under five hundred, you could be all right. What but, What do you think the final wild card team's record is? Are they under five hundred? No, no way. They always end up with like nine, like eighty eight wins, eighty nine yeah. wins. Dude, I don't. That's a gauntlet if I've ever seen one. Holy shit! Look at these other teams, though. The, the Mets don't have a tough schedule. They really don't. I, that's why I said I think the Mets get in. I've looked. Mets Dodgers, have in get, Cleveland, Washington, Baltimore, Dodgers, Rockies. Hold on, let me look at this. So Pirates. Yeah. All right, go back. I'll start over. Got. It. Okay, start in, with go- in Cleveland, in tough. Washington. In Baltimore, home against the Dodgers, home against the Rockies, in Pittsburgh, in Miami. Dude, those Pittsburgh series are huge. Those are huge. That's, that's six out of nine games. Series, dude, that's six crazy. out of nine games. It's a home and home, too. I like that the Pirates are home in the first series. I think they have an easier schedule than you, but I think they'll, they could they could slip up easier than you guys can. Yeah. And who's the other team? The Diamondbacks? Diamondbacks. We, still them, we still play them twice. So that's those are two huge series as well. Diamondbacks, right, got Diamondbacks get the Cubs who have been hot in Chicago. Then the Royals, Pirates, Nationals. Pirates, Guardians, Phillies, Phillies. for four. Guardians and Phillies, seven games in a row is tough. Yeah, I was gonna say Phillies for four. At least it's in Arizona, but then the Rockies, Rays, Marlins, Red Sox, Mets, Do- I think. I think the Diamondbacks might get in. Yeah, but you also can't you can't count out these like like the the Reds, the Giants, the Cubs. Like they're sitting right there too. Where are the Nationals? Are they still in that? Field? No, Nat, Nats Nats are nine games under now. Okay. The Mets have four against the Marlins coming up. You got to win three out of four. I know Giants, it's on the road. Yeah, Cubs. What if the Cubs are buyers at the deadline? Mm, I don't love the Cubs. I don't. I don't like the Cubs. I don't like the Cubs. All these teams play each other so much. Cubs have a pretty easy schedule, though. Anytime you get to you get to play the White Sox, I mean, you have a pretty easy schedule. Anytime any team in this NL wildcard picture is playing an American League team, I'm rooting heavy for that American League team to win. <laughs> yeah, but the Cubs get the White Sox. They get the Tigers, the Blue Jays. They A's. The, the, Cubs, the Cubs get a six-game... A not a ten game stretch against the Rockies, the A's, and the Nats in September. St. Louis has a really tough end of the season. Really tough second half of August and September. 
I don't know. Gonna, it's going to be close. I'm going to stick with Braves, Mets, Padres. I'm going to stick with what I said. I'm going to I'm going to bet I'm going to bet on my team. I I think they get in. I think it's going to be really close towards the end of the season. Yeah. They, I do dude, too. the Pirates just have a crazy schedule. That is insane. They can get through it though. I mean, if they get if they get out of that that gauntlet, like That's even what I like, mean. like if they go right around five hundred, you'll be good. Yeah. yeah, but you gotta get through it. Yeah. You can't be sitting six, five, six. And they gotta be, they gotta beat Arizona when they play them. They have to beat San Diego when they play them. Those are the big ones. I mean, you have the pitching. Send Skeens out three days. You gotta get the bats going, dude. Yeah, true. You can't win when you can't fucking hit. Yeah. Well, you can, but not a lot. It'll be good though. It'll be a, a nice, nice little yeah. stretch coming I mean, down. It's gonna be a good race. It's gonna be a good race. For sure. I don't remember a situation where there's this many teams like that close at the All Star break. Usually, I, I think, like, I think it's gonna break open pretty quick. I think in the next will. fifteen, twenty games, you're gonna see. So let's say it's a. Like you can see count- the Giants go from three games back to ten games back. And not counting two. the Braves, I think the Braves are a lock for the playoffs. I, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. There's eight teams really in contention right now for those final Who's two your spots. Cut off the Cubs are the first team not in. Cubs are in. Counting the Cubs, there's eight teams. Not counting oh, the Braves. The, the cutoff is your. You're not including the Nationals, Rockies, or Marlins. Right. Right. So from the two spot. To the nine spot. That's great. So out of fifteen, how many teams are there's fifteen teams in a league? Uh, there's twelve teams in basically in playoff contention right now. Yeah. If not leading their division. Yeah, but I think that in fifteen to twenty games is gonna be three teams outside of the three wild card teams that really have a shot. Yeah, I know. I hope you're gonna Cardinals, see those you're gonna see I a few teams Cardinals just fall off. Rumble. I think the Reds are going to fall off. I think the Giants are going to fall off. One of those teams in their picture, it's going to be the Diamondbacks, the Cardinals, or the Padres are going to have a, are going to fall off. I think one of those three. It's going to be a good stretch. I'm excited for it, actually. Yeah, it is going to be. I hope the Pirates get this break up. <laughs> this is going to be good. To, just to go get our ass kicked by fucking Philly you or know, something. No, you never know, dude. It's the MLB. It's the MLB. You never know. Who Philly would be the one seed if it started? To, who would be the last team in the wild card get right now? Who, if the playoffs started today, who would the Mets play? That's my question. How does it work again? Oh, Guys, so the- Mets would play the Cardinals right now in the in the wild card bullshit, right? I don't know. How does it work? I forget how it works. Jesse, Google that. We need to figure this out. Because the Phillies would ha- wouldn't play until the... I don't think the Dodgers would either. I think it's... No, the top two teams wait. So it would be Mets, Brewers, Braves, Cardinals. Yeah, you're right. All right, so... The new 12-team MLB format was introduced ahead of the 2022 season. In each league, three division winners make the playoffs, as do three wildcard teams. The top two teams in each division receive a bye into the divisional round, while the remaining teams play a... Top two teams in each league, league again, but yeah. Sorry. So honestly, if we're being if we're being realistic with ourselves, in the NL you want that you don't want that you don't want that two you don't want that two second wild card because perfect the scenario Braves. would be the, to get the last wild card spot last for wild the Brewers card. in the first round, especially for the Pirates who it's you're in their division like. And then even on the other side, you get to play the the AL West, which is either going to be the Mariners or the Astros. I mean, I guess it's not as easy, but. So so if playoffs started today here in the NL. The Cardinals and the Braves would be playing in a wild card series, and the Brewers and the Mets and the Dodgers would get the bye. Uh, and what's the wild game. card? Is it best two out of three? Yes. Yeah. And uh, then it's Dodgers three out of five the next round. I wish it. I wish it was one and done. It used to be, remember? Yeah, yeah. dude. It used to be. That, was- and that would play into my Pirates scenario a little bit more. You just send out the young bull. And- uh, yeah, but then you got you guys also have. Um- Jones and Keller. Yeah, yeah, Jones. That's right. There's our three guys. If there's a three game wild card series, there's the three guys you're gonna see. They'd probably go Jones in game one, Skeens in game two, Keller to close it out. Because <laughs> you have to, you have to at least get a Skeens outing in game one or two. I don't think they'd start with it though. See, but that's what the Mets did two years ago, I think, when they had Degrom, Scherzer. Um, they went with Scherzer game one. And because they wanted to save the ground for the 
next round. They thought that they can get through it without pitching Degrom. You lose game one, Degrom's got to go game two. Obviously, you win, then you're you're stuck you're stuck there in game three. Yeah, you got to win two in a row. And now you can't use Scherzer or Degrom in game three. Yeah, exactly. We ended up losing. I think we were playing the Padres. Yeah. Real quickly here in the AL, the Twins and the Yankees would get the uh, first wild card series, followed by the Mariners and Red Sox with the Guardians and the Orioles getting the bye. I think there's gonna be so much shake up, so much shake up in the AL with some of those divisions. Actually, yeah, I guess a long way to go. I just think the Yankees win that division, so I'd swap out the Yankees and the Orioles whenever that scenario was. Whoever doesn't win that division is the top wild card team in that conference or in that league. Yeah, definitely. Alrighty, let's move forward to our next point here. First half grades of each team. Let's look at, take a look at our squads and see how they fared here this year. Um, I have Mackey's Mets pulled up here. ESPN giving them a C plus. Uh, the prompt is, do we expect more from the Mets than 500? Not really. None of our ESPN voters picked them to win the division. <laughs> None of them picked to win a wild card. Probably a little harsh as my colleagues Brad Doolittle. Sounds like a fake name. Preseason odds gave them a 24% chance of making the playoffs. Still. Is it the Mets is this Pirates? What's that? Is this a Mets or the Pirates? Mets. The Mets. <laughs> the Pirates are next. I, feel like... I, found this, I found this article. It was, I was reading it. I was like, yeah, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> they're the 25 and 35 in early june and turn things around after a slow start the offense seems formidable with uh mark vientos crushing it francisco alvarez back after missing two months francisco lindor was heating up since he was moved back in the leadoff spot <clears throat> uh do you think there's enough pitching to chase down a wild card here for this mets team i think there is talk about it. i think the pitching has been incredible I'm not gonna lie. I okay. So the one thing you want to do is look at this roster at, or this pitch at this uh, pitching rotation. There's no ace, right? But they're all good. They're all reliable. There's not a guy who's that's your, gonna go. Who's your five? Right now it's um, Severino, Peterson, um, Man- Sean Manea, who's been <laughs> very good. Uh, Quintana, Scott, and Jose Quintana. Quintana has been really well too. He started the season really bad, and we don't even have Kodai Senga yet. We don't even have Kodai Senga yet, and he's coming back. So Scott's going to get pushed off, and then Senga can be our ace. And then you have those guys right behind him. They all have sub three ERAs, and you can't complain about that. You really yeah. can't. Such good the run support they're getting right now. The Mets have scored five runs in the last like eight games at least. Yeah, they're playing incredible right now. The pitching I think rotation. They're a team. I think the, they get it. Our problem is our bullpen, which we just got Matten. I think his name is. Phil Matten, Matten, whatever you want to call him. Um, so they're starting to build that uh, that bullpen now, but they're definitely gonna have to make a few more moves to. Uh, I can see them be. Buy- I can see them be big buyers at the deadline. Dude, they're at that game- point where we're three games over right now. We have a pretty light schedule coming up. We're, we're assuming we're gonna be ten games over in the next twenty five games. You gotta buy. You gotta buy. You're gonna be sitting Dude, right there. They're they're one big bat and one closing pitcher away from being a very good team. I think the only thing we need is, is a bullpen. We have Edwin Diaz. He hasn't been the best, but he's reliable at the end of the day. We got Matt Mayton, Matt in. Um, Go get I Mason Miller him. from the A's. Need someone like that. Yeah. Yeah, we get someone like that, and we're good. We'll be all right. Could you imagine if you guys got, like, Bo Bichette, or you don't need him, you have Lindor, or, like, I don't know. The Mets just the Mets have money, so, like, that's the shit they'll do. If they want to win a World Series, they're going to be like, fuck it. We're going to get another bat, and we're going to get a fucking closing pitcher. I just don't think this team. You can't write. You can't count this team out. I think they. No. They have the star power. You have Lindor. You have Alonzo. Lindor is playing incredible as of late. There was and talks of the them young, trading Alonzo a couple weeks ago. You have the young badge stepping up too. Vientos has been playing incredible. Tyron Taylor's been playing all right. I like Alvarez, um, the catcher. Dude, absolutely ridiculous. Ab- he's just out of control. He comes up in the big spots every single game. I've him in my fantasy league. He's like my. He's my backup catcher. I have Contreras on the Cardinals. He's a dog, man. This team's just playing. They're all playing really consistently. No one's even like playing that good. They're just all getting the job done. So as long as they can keep this up, I, I have no uh, no worries about this team making a playoff push. I agree. Let's hear, let's hear this guy roast the Pirates. Yeah, this is a good one here. <laughs> Pirates are getting a C, so a little bit worse there than the uh, the Mets. But the Pirates are kind of yeah, what the Mets got C minus. C was it C minus or C plus? I think that's a ridiculous score. That is a ridiculous ranking. After they were supposed to have one of the worst seasons. They're above 500 at the All-Star break. That's what I mean. Like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Here, let's see. The Pirates are kind of what we thought they would be. Mediocre. 
except they have Paul Skeens and Jared Jones, and maybe those two rookie starters are a reason alone to bump this grade up a bit, although Jones just landed on the IL with a lat strain. I didn't know that. Skeens 5-0 and with a 2.12 ERA through his first 10 starts, ranking right up there with Mark Fidrick, Pedro, uh, Fernando Vel- Valencia, Hindo, Mono, Namo, and Steven Stratzberg for the most electric first two months that have ever been noticed by a rookie starter. Jones has a 3.56 ERA with 98 strikeouts in 91 innings. Mitch Keller gives them a third top starter. As for offense, Brian Reynolds has been excellent. O'Neill Cruz has had his moments, but Brian Hayes hasn't hit at all. Henry Davis has once again failed to launch. What are you thinking here about this excerpt here about the Pirates here getting a C from the guys at ESPN? I I don't know. It's hard to say. I, Mackie, what, 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 the, what are these rankings? Do you call the Pirates on? mediocre? Do you feel that they're like a 500? Like they're just going to be 500? Like I, I, I feel like they're in that pack, at least with those wildcard teams. I just don't understand what these rankings are based on. Is it what they were anticipated on? Or it's expectations. It's, it's, here's what it says. Because so, if we're talking expectations, are... I think that the Mets and the Pirates should both be in the Bs. Yeah, because the Pirates didn't even have expectations to bring schemes up this year. They didn't have expectations to be a, a 500 team at the All-Star break. Mets didn't have expectations to be three games over at the All-Star break. I think that's pretty no. ridiculous. But um, like wait, There was, was a question? situation before this year, we didn't even think Skeens was going to pitch a game this year. And nobody, nobody thought he was going to be this good either. But I was saying, like everyone calls the, everyone always says the Pirates are just mediocre, mediocre, mediocre. Like I said, I feel like they're in that picture with the Diamondbacks, Padres, Mets are there, Mets are a step above them. But like not the Braves, not as far as that, but like Padres, Giants, like they're in that picture. They're better that, than the, they're, they're, they're that the, is mediocre, I guess. But like I think they're better than those teams. Yeah, you'd say like high mediocre, I guess. You'd say like Giants and Giants are low mediocre. Giants Cubs are low mediocre right now. Yeah, but um. Yeah, I mean they're they're in the playoff picture. However, you're going to call the Padres and the Diamondbacks, you're going to call the Pirates the same. Yeah, I, yeah. I, agree. I think the I, Pirates are a scary team to get in a in a wild card matchup with the pitchers that they could go with. All I'm saying is that we're both pretty happy in the situations we're in right now. I didn't yeah. expect. I did not expect. Uh, same with Ace, though. Like the Red Sox. What's it, what the Red Sox get on that? They were supposed to be terrible this year. Oh, they got to be a B plus. Say, I was going to read theirs next. <clears throat> Red Sox got a B plus. Yeah, makes sense. Not much expected of the Red Sox in 2024. Only two of our 26 preseason voters even picked them to make the playoffs. I, once again, one of those two, and I said the Red Sox will need their rotation to stay healthy, but if it does, they will steal. They can steal a wild card. I can definitely remember I wrote that before Luis Gilito went down for the season in the spring training, but the rotation was solid enough, ranking in the top 10 in the major in ERA. That was built on a remarkable 2.0 ERA in April, and while the group as a whole hasn't been near as good since, Tanner Hook has been outstanding all season. Boston had to improvise a bit on offense with injuries to Tristan Cass, Trevor Story, and Vaughn Grissom, but Cedan Raphael has pulled off the rare feat of moving back and forth between center field and shortstop. Jared Duran has been an extra base machine with 10 triples already. Tyler O'Neill has provided, uh, proved to be a key offseason pickup. It has put the Red Sox in an interesting position with a strong farm team that the XGM Chain Blom, Chain Blom has done a nice job of improving. Will they now use it as a trade deadline? Interesting. Will they now use it to add to the trade deadline? Um, if I'm the Red Sox, I, I I know this sounds crazy sitting at 10 games over, but looking at that American League picture, I don't know if I'd necessarily go too big at the deadline this year. I think, let's, let's look at the schedule coming up. I think the next week or two is very indicative. They get the three at the Dodgers, and they get the Rockies, and you play three against the Yankees, which is huge. Mm. I think by August 21st, when they, they play the Astros in a three-game series, by that day, you're going to know what, what's going on. The deadline is July 31st. No way. Yeah. Dude, that's like three series. Yeah, dude. The trade deadline is at the end of this month. Two weeks All right, so what do they got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 games by the 31st. You got to go... 9 and 3. No, because they're, they're already 11 games over. I'd say at least 7 and 5. You gotta. I think you got to go 7 and 5. You got to have a winning record. At least. You got to yeah. have a winning record. Because the AL is tough. It's, it's got a lot of heavy hitters up there. The Royals, if they keep playing well. The Astros, if they keep playing well. You got you to gotta keep pace. 
Yeah. Yeah, they're they're just in a different situation than the Mets and the Pirates are, but um I don't know. I wouldn't say I I you can't call a team that's eleven games over five hundred at the deadline or at at the all star break. You can't say that they're bought that they're sellers. No. No, no, no. I'm just saying I'd kind of like hold their cards and just be like, Fuck I would, yeah, I would did, hold off. I would hold yeah, off. We did good, yeah, we did good this year. Like Now we know what we really have for next year. Like, they're not going to win anything. I'm not no. saying the Pirates are either, but the Pirates aren't the Red Sox. I haven't seen a World Series. Like the Pirates, they make a playoff push. That's like their it's dream. Big. It's big yeah, for that's the big for the past 10 years. Like Mets, Mets and Red Sox, you lose in the playoffs. That's a disappointing season. Pirates yeah. make the playoffs and get swept. That's a win. The Mets just have the money to spend regardless, so it doesn't really matter I mean, if they sell you guys, are, you guys are both fans of big market teams. Yeah. No, it should be, it should be a, a good next couple of weeks. I'm actually pretty excited for this race. Find out a lot in the next two weeks. Deadline in two weeks. In two weeks, we're going to have a good podcast to talk about because there's going to be a lot of moves, not this week, but next week. Heck yeah. Lots of good stuff, like you said, Hoff. Deadline approaching here in the MLB, so we'll want to look forward to that as we get closer to that. But I think that's all we got here for the MLB here this week. One last thing before we get on out of here. Little news in the golf world. The 2024 British Open gets underway this Thursday at Royal Troon Golf Course. Take a look. Let's take a look at the betting odds for who's going to bring home the final major of the year. I have them up here. Scotty leading the pack at plus 550. Rory plus 800. Xander plus 1200. Bryson plus 1400. Colin, uh, Maraca at plus 1400 and Ludwig at plus 1600, uh, Rom at plus 2500. Um, what are you guys thinking here about that first group there for this, the open championship final major of the year? Like Huff said, what do you guys think? Ludwig at plus 1600 is good value, I'll say. I like Ludwig, and the other one playing, I like is, let me find it. He's been playing great golf. Trying to find his odds. I like Tony Fee now plus forty five hundred is a long shot, but I like Ludwig to be up there. Yeah, I don't really bet um, golf until like Saturday or Sunday. Usually, I don't like to because every time I try to bet it before the uh, play even starts, I just set my guy ends up in like not even hitting his cut, or it's Scotty who's like tenth place because he's having a bad weekend. I'm just or it's so Scotty and he goes to jail. Yeah. <laughs> yes, dude. Yes, I bet on him when he went to jail. And, like, he came back and played well that day, but the day after, he shit the bed. Yeah, because his caddy had to leave. Yeah, so I'm I'm done betting golf before Saturday. Get a feel for how they're playing. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good way to bet it, because if you still have, it like, a guy to win and say they're in, like, sixth place, but they're only a couple strokes off the lead, like, you can get them at plus 750, plus 800. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And if Scotty's up there, he's going to get the the – lean towards on the he'd odds be, so it's like be plus 150 if he's top three not by saturday exactly yeah heck yeah all right boys um i think that's everything we got here this week we got through some golf some baseball some football some basketball uh, a little bit of Connor bedard and more on this ea sports college football 25 game so anything else to add before we get out of here uh, i think that's it thanks for listening we'll see you guys next week awesome good stuff Nice to have you guys here for another week. We'll see you guys here this weekend for a live stream. But other than that, stay tuned and we'll see you soon.